The Remarkable Farkle McBride by John Lithgow, illustrated by C.F. Payne. Oh, pity the prodigy, Farkle McBride, no matter what instrument poor Farkle tried, whether strumming or blowing or drumming or bowing, his musical passions were unsatisfied. When Farkle McBride was a three-year-old tyke, all freckly, bony, and thin, he astonished his friends and his family alike by playing superb violin. He went reedly deedly deedly dee with all of the strings at his side. Reedly deedly deedly dee, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But when he was four, Farkle played it no more, in spite of his parents' beseeching. He shattered the records he used to adore. He smashed up his rosin, ripped up every score. He threw fiddle and bow to the living room floor, and he shouted, Enough of your screeching! When Farkle was five, his melodical gift once again bore rhapsodical fruit. The woodwinds inspired his spirits to lift, and he rapidly mastered the flute. He went rootledy tootledy tootledy too with all of the winds at his side. Rootledy tootledy tootledy too, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But at six, Farkle flung his flute into the lake notwithstanding its lyrical trill. He stamped on the dock till you'd think it would break. That's it, he exclaimed, I've had all I can take. That tootling gives me a brutal headache. It's so wimpy and whiny and shrill. But when Farkle was seven, a different sound rekindled his musical flame. He became the most expert trombonist around, and the boulevards buzzed with his name. He went vroompity doompity doompity doom with all of the brass at his side. Vroompity doompity doompity doom, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But at eight, he declared to his parents' despair, and as everyone else might have guessed, I can't stand the trombone with its blat and its blare. That racket is more than my eardrums can bear. So return it or throw it away, I don't care. I despise it, just like all the rest. When Farkle was nine, both his father and mum were bursting with pride and affection. For Farkle learned xylophone, cymbals, and drum the entire percussionist section. He went boom, bash, clang -a clash, all the clamor that he could provide. Tinkly bing bong bumpery crash, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But soon he fell prey to his usual gloom, despite all the praise and the flattery. First a sigh, then a sulk, then a frown, then a fume, then an ear-splitting tantrum that emptied the room. I can't take it, he bellowed, the crash and the boom and the clang and the bang of the battery. Poor Farkle at ten, howsoever renowned, reached the end of his musical tether. But then he discovered his favorite sound. Musicians all playing together. It happened like this. The conductor caught cold on the eve of a major recital. You've got to replace him, young Farkle was told. Your cooperation is vital. So he took the baton and he gave the downbeat. And kaboom! The foundations were shaken by glorious music bombastic and sweet that filled up the hall and spilled into the street, music that brought the whole crowd to its feet.
from the instruments he had forsaken. They went riddle roodle dee boom buddy bang Bravo! all the spectators cried. deedle doodle doom buddy clang the remarkable Farkle McBride. Since that sparkling night, maestro Farkle McBride conducts all the instruments he ever tried. His happy heart sings to brass, drums, winds, and strings. And remarkable Farkles at last. Satisfied. So that is the remarkable Farkle McBride, a wonderful story that introduces every instrument family in the orchestra and even highlights a few stars. Which one was your favorite?